The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. Now we're building up to the All-Ireland Final like we have been all week and I'm delighted now to be joined by Ray Canellan who has played against Galway and Armagh in this year's championship. I suppose Ray, if someone to, said to you back in the group when you were playing Galway and Armagh that these two teams would be in the All-Ireland Final, would you have been surprised? Um, no, not not particularly. Um, given given form over the last few years, um, as much as anything, not really. Like um, like both teams have been have been there thereabouts. Go, have been in in the final was it two two years ago, um, and Armagh have kind of been knocking on the door and extremely unlucky with the multiple the multiple penalty shootout kind of defeats. So no, I wouldn't have been wouldn't have been majorly surprised. And then, you know, having having played them. And and kind of seeing the the standard, um, you know, you're it kind of it kind of doubles down on that. That no, you wouldn't be wouldn't have been majorly surprised. So, I think two two really really strong teams, two really good footballing teams, um, both very kind of they can both play really kind of open football, um, and I think I think that's going to make for what could be like a, a pretty pretty exciting game. You're mentioning off here. You have Galway family, so does the maroon jersey go on this weekend? Uh, yeah, I suppose it has to. I've no, I've no ties to our ma, but yeah, my my mom is from is from Banaslo in Galway, so um, there's a big a big crew of them over there. Um, the Gibbons is in Banaslo, so uh, a few few messages this week around trying to get tickets sorted and stuff. So I think yeah, there'll be a the maroon the maroon jersey can can stay on. Not not the not the maroon I'd like, but it's a it it's a it's a close second. <laughs> Just before we get into it, just on your own campaign in the group, because you obviously played Go Air, Ma and Derry. Yeah. Is it tough to get over that because you've been so close of getting out of that group? And they've been really two tough groups for a team that's maybe trying to bridge into that prelim or, or even a quarterfinal. Um, yeah, they, like it's when the draws kind of come out, you're all kind of like, oh, you, you're always kind of like, geez, it's a bit of a bit heartbreaking sometimes to see such a tough group but at the same time as you say for a team like us who's trying to break in we also want to see kind of where we're at um and there's only one real way of doing that and it's playing those those very good sides um like your your armas your goals and your dairies um so we've had we've had our man go in the last two seasons um and i think we've we've shown in in both in in all four of those games that we're probably not very far away from that standard um and it's just again it's just very small margins really in those games i mean this year unfortunately probably my own fault in terms of the the ball i gave away towards the end of the game but we look at where we're at and you're coming into the last couple of minutes against galway and you're we either a draw or a point down and you have the ball and you're thinking right now we're going to go and try and win this um and then you know a cheap turnover costs you the game in the end um from from my perspective so um even even with the the dairy game as well i feel we were probably like on the day the better team in, in huge aspects of of the pitch um in in all the kind of key areas i think we we did we got the better of dairy a lot but again just the really good team to punish you they they converted two goal chances they were um just a bit more efficient and i think that's kind of where we're at now is that we're very competitive but maybe just um, the moments that we're not on it is what punishes us um, significantly, and I think that showed in, in the in the in the couple of games. Um, so yeah, no, I think I think we're not a million miles away from from that standard. But as you say, it can be tough seeing those draws come out, but it's very exciting because then you come into this end of the year, and it gives you a bit of encouragement that you're you're probably doing the right things if you're only losing out to the All Ireland finalists by you know uh, a kick of a ball here or there. I know there was an image after you played Galway where Killy McDay came over to you straight away. He's mm. obviously a player you know quite well, but his performance this year against Dublin, just sensational stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know Killy now the last few years. Um, we spent a little bit of time together in Australia. Um, when we were we our times overlapped there. Um, I'm I'm happy. I'm delighted for Killian actually because you know he's even from his time in Australia and his time since he's come home, it hasn't been straightforward for him. He's picked up, you know, injuries that have kept him out and even building back into, you know, the likes of that Dublin game and, and whatever it's kind of coming off the back of injury. Um he's he's shown 
in the like the All Ireland was the All Ireland semi final, the All Ireland final. How uh, in two years ago, like you know, probably one of the best players in the country when he's up and running. Um, and I think it's really encouraging for Galway to kind of see him building at this time of the year into kind of some prime football again. And I think it showed. Um, it showed against Donegal, like he, he kicked it, he kicked a great score from underneath the Hogan stand there. Um, you know, he's he's so powerful, he's so strong, he's you know, six foot whatever, six foot two or three, and he can come up and kick scores. Um, he's gonna be a massive threat for you guys kind of going into that game. Um, along with along with a lot of your guys around the middle, very like very kind of big physical side. Um, I think it's one area that you may have the advantage over him as is in that middle kind of third with, with the size and, and pace and strength. Just before we get back in Killian, I, it's something I wanted to touch on you because the Galway kick out is nearly old school in one sense. We just kind of have these four monsters yeah. across the middle and it's it's kicking along. But from you experiencing that, what's that like when you're coming up against, I suppose, because it's not just maybe where some teams have those one or two threats go, I nearly have this kind of four across the middle. Yeah, yeah, they certainly do. Um, Like you look at guys, like there's even guys there that you don't, like the likes of Tierney and stuff who, he, he doesn't come to your mind as like a midfielder. He's more kind of, you know, centre forward, wing forward. But like Matthew's like six foot four, I think. He's a massive big guy. I didn't actually appreciate how tall he was. And then Paul Conroy, um, Phil, um Killian and, and these guys, um, like it, it's tough because it's kind of you need you need to maybe try and put pressure on the kick out so you want to maybe squeeze up on a kick out and force a team long most of the time um because you know once it goes long it's a bit more of a 50 50 whereas it's a bit different against Galway because the long option is probably a bit more kind of 60 40 70 30 in Galway's favor um so it's it, it causes a lot more to think about so what i think Armagh i've seen, I've seen them do quite a bit uh, quite a bit is they do have a tendency to drop off on that. So it'll be interesting to see kind of when they choose to drop off and when they choose to push up. And it's certainly something that we have to think about a lot. Like how do we match up on, on the big men around the middle? Um, like our Madu have have some size, but I think, as you say, it's rare that you've kind of got four and five options off a kick out. Um, and even even Tierney, I remember against Galway, there's a, like a certain set play um, that Galway were, were doing against us. And, and they got some joy off it where they isolated Tierney by himself. And, and he was that option then long. So certainly plenty to think about. And as an opposition, it's just, I suppose you need to kind of think, right, do we concede the kick out, fill the middle and prevent the long? Or do we just back ourselves to, to compete and try and get the ball to the ground and then get numbers there? So it's going to be interesting to see kind of what way our man decides to go with it. I get the sense it's not that easy to break the ball off those men because like that's the natural thing everyone will say. Uh, no, no, it's certainly not. Um, that's obviously the challenge. Look, it's it's the same with everything. You you try and come up with with answers that will suit your your team, um, and give you guys a platform. Um, but again, like I don't think Paul Conroy or these guys are going to just let you break the ball off them. So, um, it it's just it's just about competing. It's just about being as aggressive as you can. Um, you know whether that means not letting the person jump and and really getting hands on before they jump. Or, you know, just, just really kind of competing, coming through the back of them and trying to break the ball back forward. Like, it's just all about that kind of the the hunger for for for, for getting in and, and really kind of making life as difficult as possible. Um, Like, there's there's lots of ways. Like, Armagh, have, they'll have loads of different kick out, kick out defensively to kick out setups defensively. So, like, they, they might just drop a load of numbers back into that area. So from, you know, Gleason's perspective and goal, then that that changes things. And does, does he choose to just go short then? Um, but I, I don't. I don't really see that happening, particularly in Crow Park. It's so open. It's so it's so spacious. I, I'd imagine Leeson will be will be looking to go long, you know, as as often as he can. Were you surprised with that boomer? Um, no, not really. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> no, not not at all. Not surprised, but you <laughs> you can still be expecting it, and it can still catch you out if you know what I mean. Um, because they execute it very well. Um, but it, he's just like Cleese has just got such a, a good strike at the ball. Um, he keeps it nice and low, but also gets a lot of distance. So it's extremely hard to defend against. Because if if you're defending behind and it's coming in low, it's very hard to get your hand across in front and and break it. Um, so yeah, no, not not surprised at all. And it, it is such an asset for them. Um, but again, look, you just you just have to you just have to compete as often as possible. And 
I think Armagh will be able to. I mean, it's they're not Galway aren't going to clean them on kickoffs. I don't think it's just it is just probably slightly advantage Galway. Just on that, because one player around the middle this year, John Mayer's, yeah. the levels he's went has been unbelievable. Like, if, I suppose from people from the outside, they probably weren't aware of the levels John Mayer could get to, but it's probably not a big surprise for people within the county when we see what he'd done at club level. Mm. What what stood out for you playing against him? Um, I, I remember in the first, he, I, I kind of spent a lot of time on him. Um, in the first half, I think he came off in the second half against us. Um, kind of halfway through, but I just remember <laughs> the amount of times he he kind of he just went and went again and went again and went again, and he doesn't make runs just for the sake of it. They were all really powerful runs that like you had to mark him because he he would have been a threat otherwise. Um, and I think I think that's I think that's his strength. He he breaks lines so well for Galway, and what that does is it creates little gaps for. Like you, you might have Comer or or Walsh or or even like the likes of McHugh coming up, um, like how often he comes up these days and Silk, like when you've got a big man like um, a big man running through the middle, that's very hard to to stop. It's it's just the the holes that that creates in around him and behind him, because they they draw people like him, people like Mara draw attention, and uh, and then and then other things start to free up, but. I, I certainly I certainly was impressed just by his the level of athleticism um and his ability to just constantly like go again hard run go again hard run um I, I do remember thinking that for kind of five or ten minutes I was like geez he's gas run out of gas soon um <laughs> he didn't he didn't seem to so um no it's it's definitely it's definitely an area that's that I think oh we can 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 punch holes when when they get those strong runners um bursting breaking lines is this the thing. I know when you played them, they were still down a few bodies because they were still going yeah. through that injury crisis. But even when you see how they eventually got the job done against G, do you think that's kind of stood to them now as the year went on and they've gradually got the bodies back? Yeah, it's 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 interesting because I think like Galway have got to an All-Ireland final with either their best players not playing their best football or without their best players. Um, similar to like the point I made about Killian is that like it's exciting for Galway fans that he's probably coming into some good football towards the best, the, the most important part of the year, obviously. Um, and similarly to for like if you can get kind of Sean Kelly is fit, like what an asset he is that you haven't really had this year. Um, similarly like Damian Comer picking up injuries throughout the year, like Shane Walsh probably hasn't really played shit like the Shane Walsh football that we've seen before yet this year um there's such a it it can be it can be a positive and negative that maybe what happens if they don't get to that level again you know you're you're potentially at a weakness but then at the same time the upside of if all these guys are fit and play well it's going to be the first time you've had it all year and, and potentially the strongest side you have in the biggest game of of go is you know recent history just with that, I know we were talking about Killian, but for from an outside perspective, what's he like off the pitch? Killian, oh, he's probably such a genuine guy, quiet, like very unassuming, very humble, um, very hardworking, um, very much just you know kind of keeps himself, and he's he's just a quiet, genuine, nice fella. Um, yeah, I wouldn't really have a kind of bad word to say about him. Um. You know, just extremely professional, extremely hard working. I think you saw that, like, made the hard decision to come home. Like, I can tell you, there would have been a massive appetite to keep him in Australia. He had shown, even despite his injuries, he had shown enough that they they would have definitely kept him out, kept him on for another couple of years. So, being I suppose mature, at, he was he's a young guy as well. Being mature enough at that age to to make the decision to come home, and and get into his career. He's been successful in that, and now he's shown how good a footballer he is as well. I think his personality kind of it is what you would imagine it is in terms of kind of professional and and kind of um and diligent and how he and how he goes about goes about everything. Um, and like you saw, he like you you mentioned, he kind of came up to me after the game. Um, <laughs> obviously, I wasn't in in too good a mood after the game, given what had just happened. Um and like you know came came straight up and 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 said a couple of words and we had a nice chat um which was which is always good to to catch up with them um so 
Um, yeah, he is. He's such a he's such a good fella, and he he has actually he's a connection to to my hometown, Athlone. He's he's got family here as well, where where I'm from. Um, so yeah, no, he's he is. He's he's a, he's a great guy. We were only saying it on the podcast. Um, that game against Dublin was his first seventy minutes since October, and mm. his Donegal that was his second seventy minutes all year, which is which is crazy. It's crazy, yeah. like when you when you consider that. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, as I said, it's it's exciting though because it's coming into the biggest game of of the season, and he's putting some good form together. So it's it's only it's only going to mean that he's that he's more and more confident. Um, coming into this now, which from a Galway perspective, I mean, that'd be that'd be quite an exciting kind of to know that you've got a player of that standard coming to the fore at this time of the year. <clears throat> Just with that, you obviously know Ross McQuillan too from the AFL. Do, do you send either of them a text or does it kind of make you neutral having known the two lads? <laughs> I'd still probably be a bit more go with. Um, Ross, Ross, our time didn't overlap as much as the time with Killian. So I never really got to meet Ross as much. Um, but we've, we, we've, we'd know each other, we'd speak to each other. Um, he's another guy who, I mean, he was, he was massive for Arma. Um, coming in off the bench, and I think I do think it's kind of one area where our man are like scary strong is, is is the people who come in, whether it's like Stephen Campbell. Like I know he started against us in in the championship, but like he's been coming in now as like such an impact player. And then the same for for Ross. Like that's probably the best I've seen Ross play since he's come home. Um, and from similar to as as the guys like Mar and and, and Killian, massively athletic, massively powerful. Um, and to come in at kind of, you know, maybe 50 odd minutes to have someone like that kind of running at you being an option for kickouts. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably going to be where I'm at. We'll start to kind of win, win the arm wrestle a little bit is maybe around that kind of 60 minute mark when they can start to bring these guys in. I just feel they're potentially a little bit stronger with, with who comes in, comes in for them. Just on that, cause we were talking after the go air mag game and the Drew Mekovic park and Sligo and the, Final round at round robin, they got one ten out of their one twelve from short kickouts alone. So that mm. that just shows the threat, and you've probably seen it too. Because obviously, when you play them, you can't just fully press for the full game. You you have to give them something. But it they're just such a threat. Then when they do get it off short, so Galway or Armagh, yeah. Armagh, yes, yeah. no, they are. And I think I think it's the biggest difference really with with Armagh's um is that kind of running threat, um. They've just got so many, um, like it's it's a big. The likes of Kieran Mackin's a big loss for them, um, yeah. because he's he's such a strong runner. But like he, that type of player is something that they they've they've heaps of, um, like all of their players from whether it's Forker, Grugan, Turbot, Mackin when he was fit, um, like they can all punish you running the ball and, and carrying the ball from from deep, um, and if you let them kind of get that overlap from their defense. So they get the short kick out of the way and then they're getting two V1s and three V1s. That's when they start to become really, really, really dangerous. Um, but similarly to that, you try and press the kick out, they they've they've such strong kick passes of the ball. Um so they can beat you kind of both ways. Um I think it's gonna be interesting to see what goal we do on the kick out. Like if they if they do push up, Crow Park leaves an awful lot of space one on one and Armad do look to go long quickly. Um, once they get that first kick out of the way, they'll look long with a with an early ball. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they do there. And then if they do decide um to kind of drop off, you're then allowing runners to come at you. Um and we've seen Armada, they can be extremely patient on the ball. Um, like we've all seen the kind of social media clips of, you know, keeper holding the ball, two hands up in the air, and and they've got their set plays around open play. Um, so I suppose it's kind of it's kind of going to be interesting to see how how it starts to play out. Um and how Galway kind of anticipate it and, and and try and react to it. Um, but certainly their their threat is is that kind of run that run from deep off off short kickouts is is somewhere where they can really expose you. They can mix it though, can they? They can play that slow way and then ring and drift out to eleven then. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, it's the same for both sides. Like both yeah. sides are actually quite similar. And like any, I remember doing reviews on on both of them, and, and the the similarities are. Are there, um, Armagh are probably a quicker side in terms of the they've they've got probably the more of those like really explosive runners coming through, where Galway probably are a bit more patient, look to find the ball in little pockets, and then get it to their scores, um, just to kind of come off on a loop, 
but at the same time then Armagh have, have shown numerous times and like I remember they did it against us quite a bit where they're able to slow, slow down and, and you know go over and back and, and go through the bit of the bit of possession and, and phases football um and I suppose where Armagh then are, are really dangerous is that they can, they can go through those phases and then you think you've got it covered and they've got people like Reno O'Neill who can kick it from you know 55 metres um and, and all that does is if, if Reno O'Neill kicks one of them, the next time he gets the ball, you're probably going to step out a bit further and there's going to be gaps behind you. So they, they can kind of beat you in, in multiple different ways. So it's going, it's going to be tough. And I think I think it's where Armagh will have their kind of most joy is, is in the variance that they have in, in attack. What was the most thing that stood out for me uh, when you played Armagh? Um, it was... <laughs> It's probably a bit of a, a symptom of of our own um poor play in the first half. We 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 dropped a lot of balls short in the first half. The speed that they went from from back to front was was massive. Um, like they they could counter attack so quickly. Um, and as as a midfielder, you're doing a lot of running up and down. Um, and I did remember thinking, geez, like I'm I'm pretty gassed here because we would attack and we 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 turned over the ball quite cheaply, but we also dropped a lot of balls short. And the speed at which they broke in numbers and like I remember doing the review after the game and there was multiple instances of like four or five, six Armagh players not even looking at the ball, just bursting forward as quickly as possible and then moving the ball kind of on with that group of players. Um, So that was that was certainly one thing is is where I see them. They're so threatening is that the speed that they break. And I think you saw it, I think it was a, it was a Turbot's last point against um against Kerry. Um like the the speed, they broke the ball up the the right hand wing and the speed of Turbot um mm. for, and passed it over the bar like they've got they've got a few boys who can who can go at that pace like Stephen Campbell is quick like Reno Neal is relatively quick um but then like the likes of Turbot these guys are, are rapid so um yeah that that's probably where where they're 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 very threatening is is how quickly they go from defending to to attacking it was probably one he eyed too given the heartbreak Armagh went through and. You didn't know where the frame of mind was going to be after losing another penalty shootout. But I suppose one thing this Armagh team has is just massive resilience. Yeah, it was it was definitely look. In our eyes, there was there was probably no team stronger than the other really in in that group. Um, like Armagh have always been. If you think about it, what Armagh's last two or three years could have been, had it not yeah. been for losing out in penalties the mindset going into that game would have been completely different. So it's not like we were going into our man thinking they were the weakest side in it. On form, they were arguably the strongest side in it in, in our group. Um, but just unlucky through through results. Um so we weren't it's not like we were going in target and it's all oh, that the Armand is probably the softest shoulder we'll have. Um that wasn't really it. Um but yeah certainly it was it was coming at a time for us that um we hadn't had a game for for a large number of weeks, so we were probably thinking, right, we need to get off the off the ground running here. Um, but again, yeah, I don't I don't know if I'd have said that it was kind of like the the one that we were targeting. But yeah, and to your second point about kind of how resilient they've become, like they'd they'd have to be resilient, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they, I think whether you were resilient before the last few years for them, you were going to be resilient after. Um, because Jesus, I I don't know how they've. They kept it going because there is obviously a lot of belief, and you saw it in Reno Neal's interview straight after the game when he got his man of the match award about, you know, like we're in a close game and and we've won it now. Um, I think they've they've been. I think those losses have only built that kind of resolution in them, um, rather than taking it away, which is I suppose a testament to them too. Just with this, uh, obviously we've mentioned both. Like defenses have been really strong, but Galway this year like have been immense, particularly in their back six. And you consider how young some of the players are, and they've made some big calls there. When you when you played them, breaking them down, did you find that a challenge? Um. Yeah, yeah. It's they're they're both again like they're both both teams are quite similar um mm. they both kind of commit numbers back look it's the same it's the same as everyone really these days like you're everyone commits kind of 13 or 14 back really um but yeah like go go we were probably one of the toughest we played from from that perspective in terms of just trying to get shots away um 
they're they don't concede they don't concede much they don't really leave little pockets of space to try and drift into um just very well organized and it's it's not even the kind of one v one stuff it's it's like it's it's just the actual shape and and the and the structure and organization of them doesn't leave for for many gaps um and i think look that having i suppose players like even if if sean kelly's back fit like depending on where he plays but like paul conroy as well like your players out the, the out the field players like your midfielders half forwards um do an awful lot of work for for Galway um as much as they're kind of their man markers do um and then the fact that you've got like players like you know like McHugh and, and Silk playing so well um <clears throat> who can who can lock down players but then also like break up the field and, and get scores and, and assist scores um they're, they're an extremely hard team to to break down and, and to find gaps and find space and yeah for, definitely there's kind of a lot being made this week that maybe Goy's experience could stand to them from 22. Do you think too much of it will be met at that like on the outside looking ahead to this final? Does an All-Ireland final, does the experience count here or do you think it's just both teams are kind of at similar or does it does it stand to go having that experience which Irma haven't had? Yeah, um... Look, I think, I think, it, I think it does help. Um, even just for the, the week leading into the game, the the hype around it, having been exposed to that before, probably mitigates some risk there in terms of nerves, in terms of not knowing what to expect. Whereas Armar coming in, having never experienced that before, really. Um, but at the same time, they've. The process for them won't change. Like it'll be the same as it was leading into the semi final, the same as it was leading into the quarter final. Um, they they will they will have been prepping to get to an All Ireland final, and and I suppose the the processes in terms of what they do pre game and stuff, I'd imagine will will not change too much. Um, I mean with the with the All Ireland final, it's it's not like say. The likes of you know, I remember in Australia, like the grand final, it's like a week long festival leading into it, and the players have loads of media engagements to do. They've got a parade the the week leading into yeah. the game, stuff like that. There's there's none of that with Gaelic football, so you know from from that point of view, I'm sure I'm I will try to just be downplaying it from what's the difference between the All Ireland semi final and the All Ireland final. It's the same same venue. You're going to have more support. Um, the week leading into it, we're going to do the exact same things we did two weeks ago for for the semi final. Um, it will be somewhat an advantage having go haven't been there before and more players experience that and the nerves will will potentially be less. But again, Armagh will just do as much as they can to to limit that and, and mitigate that. I would imagine, and and they've got people who've been there like like having like having Kieran Donaghy and 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 stuff there is. You'll get a lot of experience. You'll get a lot of okay. This is what to expect. This is what it feels like. Start to visualize it now. Start to get yourself used to it. Let the butterflies start building now. So that by the time we get to the end of the week and we're we're at game day, you you've you feel like you've been here before. Do Galway have an advantage though that they've won trophies under this current group? Like obviously Irma have suffered heartbreak and they haven't got um, a tr- got a trophy recently in their hands. Yeah, I mean it's winning always helps, but at the same time. Doing things the hard way can can give you an advantage too. There's yeah. going to be is there an extra is there an extra drive in in Armagh for example because they haven't won anything yet. Um, like it, it might be maybe a silly argument, but I mean, you can you can kind of look at it both ways. Is kind of what I'm trying to say. Um, so look, it's always an advantage to have gone to a final and to have won it rather than to have been in numerous big games and lost them. Um, however, you look at what Armagh are going to gain from that Kerry victory. Um. Like you saw, Reno Neal said it at the end of it. I, I've already mentioned it that you know we're, we've been in a close game now and we've won the close game. Like the belief that's going to instill in them, and I think there's a chip on the shoulder of the Armagh players to prove to people, like it's every every game is on its on its day, and they were unlucky on those days, and it's the same for this one. It, it's going to come down to it on the day, and and they'll they'll have as much kind of right to win it as as Galway. You're nearly thinking back to 22 when Shane Walsh came alive in Crow Park against Kerry. It needs to happen this weekend where we can get a Walsh and Comer clicking. It it didn't really happen against Donegal. Walsh was taken off in the second half. 
Uh, Comer struggled. Brendan McCall did a fantastic job of them. But those are two players that they'll need to hit it if Galway are to get over the line this weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think you're right. I think I think it's been probably the most obvious. Um, I suppose kind of because of the the profile he has and and how well he's shown he can play when he's not playing to that level. It, it it's quite glaringly obvious. Um, I think it's an area that that Galway will will need. I think I think when Galway's best players are playing their best, they will beat Armagh. But the biggest problem for Galway is they haven't had all of their best players playing. Or their best players have not been playing their best football, um, and I think that would be probably the biggest concern coming into into the game is, like, are we going to get the Shane Walsh that kind of walks around the place, not very interested, or are we going to get the Shane Walsh that played against Kerry two years ago that was put in probably one of the best kind of corner forward displays of of recent kind of times, um, and I think that's it. That'd be a concern for for me is that it's very hard to turn on. I know, look, he's exceptional. It's very hard to turn that on, though, on a given day. Mm. And I would, you'd have liked to have seen him kind of maybe building more and his performances improving more the closer it got to the game. Um, but having said that, he's got the ability to blow anyone out of the water. And I think that's where you just, you, you have to kind of back him to do that. Um, and similarly with Comer, like... Demo is such a, a powerful threat. Um, particularly like Armagh are, are not particularly strong on a on a long high ball. Um, like they don't have a huge big full back line. And if if you can get the two guys kind of humming together and then you've got kind of Tierney, Finnerty all buzzing around, like there's just threats everywhere. Um so I do I do think you're gonna need your best players playing their best football. Um and with with Galway, I think that's just probably where you haven't just had that consistently throughout. Like if you were to if you were to at the start of the year say that like, you know, McHugh and, and Silk were probably gonna be the two best players in the field there the last day and, and you know when you when you the game pretty much, I know you probably would have been like, Oh well, what about Comer and and and, and Shane? And and that's that's where Galway have, have benefited is that their squad has grown over the last kind of couple of years that the the guys who aren't necessarily the game winners as such ha have been stepping up and, and doing the job that the the so called kind of game winners would have been doing before. Um, so if you can get it on a day now where everything is clicking, it's just it's, it could be a very very threatening day for Arma. From a player's perspective, if if you're involved this weekend and you're Sean Kelly, you want to play. Maybe even if you're not a hundred percent right, it's an All Ireland final. It's what you've dreamt as your captain as well. You want to play in this game. If he's anyway right, does he just automatically start this weekend? yeah jeez I don't know tough yeah <laughs> I mean there's there's guys there like you have to look at it twofold is that there's there's got they've won without him um does he walk straight back in potentially not but at the same time the boost it would be like if he is fully fit the boost he would be to have from the very start would be incredible um but similarly, the the benefit you get from him coming off the bench will be will be unbelievable too. Um, I I, re I actually I, I don't know. I wouldn't like to be a manager in that situation. I wouldn't like to have to, you know, call someone aside and tell them that they're not playing the All Ireland final after after helping the team get there. But at the same time, he on his day like he's he's one of the best players in the country and he's the captain for a reason. Um, and I think on All Ireland final day, you put your best foot forward from the start. So I think if if Sean Kelly's fit, then you're you're really looking to 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 bring him in from the start. Yeah, with the benches, they're obviously going to be huge. Like they've made such an impact this year, but he still is a player. Even if he doesn't stay at last twenty, could be huge here. Yeah, no, for, look, he's it's it's a given. He's he's so good that it doesn't matter if he starts or if he doesn't start. He's going to impact the game positively. Um, so it's really just it's a it's a good choice to have, not an easy one to make though. The question was put last week on the podcast, which bench was stronger? And it's probably one of the first All-Ireland finals where you kind of go through each sub individually to see who'll have the better impact. These benches for both sides have been absolutely like massive to get them here. Yeah. Yeah, I I think I said it. I like I probably feel maybe Galway, or sorry, um, Armagh are potentially stronger in, in that area. Um. 
and like it's it's just maybe I'm just basing it off the last day given the the impact of like McQuillan and stuff um I might be overlooking like someone for Galway but I, I do just feel that it's probably an area that, that they're going to be stronger like we've, we've seen now both in, in hurling and football how often games are, are going into um extra time um and I just think yeah like given the types of players that that Armagh are bringing in they're all really really athletic like good footballers big men and I just think that like coming into the last kind of 10 minutes of a game and, and maybe extra time I just think that's such a such a weapon um and like yeah I think similarly to like Killian in coming into good form like the likes of like McQuillan coming into good form for for Armagh you know it's it's dangerous it's dangerous for for Galway um and I, I do think I do think that's probably just somewhere they're, they're going to be a little bit stronger this rivalry has been brewing uh, 22, the, obviously the famous penalty shootout last year in Carrick, uh, disaster really from a Galway perspective and this year in Markovic to draw. Do you think we're going to get a classic this weekend or could this be very much similar to the way Gaelic football is at the minute, control at the start and maybe a last, last 10, last 20, just chaos? Uh yeah, it probably has the hallmarks for maybe the, the latter of kind of, you know, neither team wanting to concede too early and and being a bit cagey. Um, you know, our mat tend to drop off on kickouts. Um, so we're not going to see a high press, which means we're not going to be many, many gaps early. Um, but at the same time, um you you just you just don't you just don't know. But I would imagine I, I would imagine both teams going out are not they're gonna to want to be in the game with, with 20 minutes left. And I think it'll be kind of follow the trends I, I'd imagine of, of what we've seen lately of like a bit cagey at the start and then it just starts to to open up. Goal chances start to appear, balls played in over the top, like a few kind of backdoor cuts towards the, the latter half of the, the second half. I think you'll you'll start to kind of, you, as you say, might go a bit mad um towards the end. I hope it does. I, I'd love if I'd love if both teams just came out and went for it straight off the bat. Yeah. But just given the given what's at stake for both teams. Like I know Galway Galway's last All Ireland win is is two thousand and one or two yeah. thousand one. Like our Ma's last All Ireland win is two thousand three. I know Galway have been to the final since, but like it it doesn't come around often, and you don't want to lose it in the first twenty minutes. Um, so given that and given what's at stake and 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 how much it's going to mean, I think probably see a bit cagey at the start, and then as the game progresses, someone's going to have to go and win it. And that's when you want to see people, you know, taking their man on, taking chances, um, going for long one v ones, and and hopefully the game opens up then for for the second half. Who's going to win it? I actually don't know. To I like I know it's such a like a, a shy answer to the question, but like, <laughs> um, obviously like when you'd ask me to kind of come on and chat to you, I was like, well, I'm going to have to see who do I think will win this, and it's it's genuinely so hard to to make a call on it. I would like to think Galway have more um across the field. Um I think if you're to go kind of one for one through the 15s and, and, and the bench, I think you'd probably lean towards Galway. Um but at the same time, like Armagh can beat you probably in more ways than Galway. Um they can they can kick the ball early, they can run, um they're they're Kind of they have a few more maybe threats going forward, but then I'd look at it that I think Armagh or sorry the Galway defenders are probably stronger than the Armagh defenders and can probably match up with Armagh better in that point of view. Um, so I'd probably be given like a little bit of an edge to Galway throughout as if you're to go through that one to fifteen, trying to match people off. I, I'd probably I'd probably be nudging Galway, and my mother kill me if I said Armagh. So <laughs> it's uh, self self preservation as well. <laughs> Just finally, Ray, it's uh, it's been a ritual for all us Galway fans this week. We're nearly at some stage during the week we watch a year till Sunday. Um, just just to get us yeah. uh, up for this game, I presume you've watched it. I don't know what, I've actually never watched the year. Till really? Sunday. Yeah, I swear to God. Yeah, I swear to God. Um, I'll have to um, I'll have to get into it. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's one. It's one definitely I had to take off. Yeah, no, it's it's one of the all time greats. Well, anyone from Galway will tell you that, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've I, I've heard about it right now, but I've never I've never actually watched it. I've uh, 
I've watched Marooned, the Westmead kind of equivalent of yeah. a hundred times. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Well, uh, that's all we do have time for uh, on today's show. Uh, thanks a million to Ray for coming on. You're welcome along to part two of the Maroon and White pod for this special edition. In part one, we had Ray Canellan who came up against Goa in Armagh and now we're joined by Niall Murphy Sligo who came up against Goa in that Connacht semi-final where Goa ran Sligo, uh, well, Sligo ran Goa so close in that game and probably should have came away with something. Just with that, uh, Niall, when you think back in Markovic Park when you had them to your pin of your collar, what do you think of now when you see them in the All Ireland final? Uh, yeah, to be honest, probably probably a little bit of shock, I suppose. If if I'd come off the pitch that day and you told me Gold would be in an All Ireland final and Favors going into All Ireland final, I probably would have laughed at a little bit, a little. Um, and, and I suppose just because we're a Division Three outfit, they're a Division One outfit, and um, probably come away from that game thinking, "Geez, if they, if those boys fall down the pack a lot, and we." We jumped up the pack a lot, so yeah. As I said, there, if you were to tell me that they'd be in an all Ireland final, I probably would have laughed you off a little bit. But again, in saying that, they had a lot of their top quality players missing that day, and I think that, um, you know, probably had potentially had a little bit to do with uh, how, how close we ran them. And um, who knows, but you know, it definitely impacted their game that day. Before that game, did you see it as a real chance to turn them over? Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent, we did, and. Um, and look, I think we, we did a lot of work on them that week, the week leading up to it. Um, we would have even done a lot of work on our, I suppose, our own mindset going into that game. We obviously played them the year before in the Connacht final where they had beaten us by 13 or 14 points, beaten us quite convincingly up in uh, in uh, Castlebar that day. So, look, we would, have, we would have looked at that game as to where they were at at that stage and, and as to where we were at. Um, and as I said there already, like, Coming into that game, they'd no Homer, he only came on, they'd no McDade, no Tierney, no Maher. A lot of those guys would have played against us the year previous. And even with that, the likes of Peter Cook and Ian Burke would have been around in that game. So all of a sudden, you're, they're probably missing six or seven key, key players from the Connacht final win against us the year previous. And you know, we we definitely had set it up a level. We'd gone into, we'd played for in the Sam Wire competition in, in 2023 and we'd, we'd, we'd be promoted as well so we definitely jumped on a level but yeah look I suppose we would have looked at it in that sense that Galway had definitely lost a lot of players uh, and we had definitely I suppose, gained a little bit of experience and uh, you know our performance ha- had definitely increased so we definitely went into the game with, with, with a lot of confidence Do you feel like that day Everton went right for you they could have went right? Yeah yeah definitely definitely Um you know, they had a goal chance early on that they missed, um, which was massive. Uh, and, and yeah, and look, as I said, there like the, those players that they were missing was, was a huge, huge factor. It definitely gave us a lot of belief as well. Um, you know, when they're missing their key players, I suppose subconsciously you probably get that extra bit of belief. But yeah, on the day, I think things things did go quite well. And in terms of our of our tactics, the way we set out to play, like I know our turnover count was was really, really low. Uh, we looked to stifle them a bit on their own kickouts, which we got a bit of joy off as well. So, yeah, look, I think we set our, our stall out well that day. And, yeah, we uh, we got a little bit of luck, but then missed a couple of goal chances and things like that. So things did fall into place. So. Yeah, when you looked at that game, you obviously went 5-1 ahead. You were 9-6 ahead. You were 14, 14-13 ahead at the end. And it really looked like it was going to be one of the big, biggest shocks of the championship. Like. Just before we touch, do touch on Galway, do you still look back on that game with regret? Or you... uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, probably, I think I was quoted maybe a couple of weeks ago saying it was uh, the worst defeat of my career. So um, oh, it might sound a bit exaggerated, but it, it definitely was. Like, it definitely was a huge, huge signal. Like, a huge signal. Like, we, I suppose, don't get over the likes of Mayo or Galway or Roscommon too often. So I think in terms of history it hasn't happened that often so like that's probably our pinnacle being from the weaker county in Connacht is, is trying to beat those teams so when you have it on a plate for you and you kind of get snatched away at the, at the end it is a, it's a sucker goal but yeah look it is one that was hard to live with for a couple of weeks and you definitely find yourself thinking about it now seeing where Galway are at and, and how far they've come on from that game it's uh, yeah, it's a bit mad but 
yeah, there's one that will, uh, I think that's sticking on with the memory, is it? It's sticking you mentioned Comer wasn't playing. He gets the ball out near the sideline and he sees a bit of open green space in front of him. It's like the ball when he gets the ball. There was just no there's just no stopping him that day when he got that ball. No, there wasn't, unfortunately, yeah. Um yeah, no, I've a vivid memory of 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 that situation and, and of it happening. But yeah, I think uh we were, we were slight, I think it was Evan Lyons, our, our cornerback, and you know, messed with him after the game. Like, why didn't he just rugby tackle him? And he was just, he was like, I, I tried, I tried. So he did, in fair, and you could see him kind of hopping off him a bit, and he just bounces off him, but like, he, he did try to pull him down. Um, but yeah, look, ah, look, it was just, yeah, it was just sickening that one in, like, we were in control of the game the, the whole way through. In fairness, they were starting to come back, like, you know, we were leading by two, three points at maybe 15 minutes ago. It was a point up the leg. We were a point up the leg at that and yeah probably a couple of regrets personally as well myself in that game. But, yeah. does robert finnerty's cold palmer celebration stick in your head uh yeah it, it does <laughs> a bit yeah it was yeah i remember seeing cold palmer actually getting a goal i think it was maybe after me done it and it was yeah it was uh finnerty was the first person that came to mind but yeah 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 it's funny what small little things that stick out but yeah yeah I think he got one four, one five or something that day, so he was on fire to be fair. Yeah, one five he got that day. Who were you on um that day? Uh predominantly McGrath, Johnny McGrath. Um How did you he... find Johnny McGrath? Because he's been talked about so highly now. Yeah, he is. Um he's getting lots and lots of toilets. Um I po- you know, I po- probably went into the game looking at some of the other defenders and and thinking they were gonna pick me up. I know I'd, I'd marked Lynn before, so um, so McGrath's probably a little bit of an unknown uh, going into this year. I know he played last year as well, but no, he he sticky. Like uh, actually looking back in the game, like we got a lot of space, and I got a lot of space, which I was kind of a little bit surprised about. Um, but that's probably more so because Galway can probably feel they can press us high and push us high, so it leaves a little bit more space in behind. But no, he he was he he like he was sort of a fella who's just there by your side all the time. Um, I look probably had a bit of joy in terms of our kick passing game, which I wasn't expecting. Um, but I suppose any time you were receiving any ball, he was just there by your side. And he's, he's sort of one of those sticky cornerbacks. Um, I think he'll have a lot more protection this week. I don't expect there to, to, to be a massive amount of kick kick pass opportunities. The game we played, and we actually had, a, had quite a few, probably based on the fact that they just decided to go after us a lot more. Um, but yeah, no, he's, he's having a great year, and I've seen some of the stats on some of the players he's kept. Tight, he probably have turb at this weekend, I'd imagine. Um I think they they, they they matched up in the in the park a couple of weeks ago as well. So that'll be a great battle. Look forward to that. Just on that, um is it getting away from Johnny? Is that the hardest thing for marking him? Yeah, but possibly. Look, I'd lo- I'd, lo- I'd love to I'd love to play the game again. Um because I was just talking about there about the space that we were afforded to didn't really play as sweeper, but yeah, hundred percent. I think he's sometimes he's he's not all he's you'll see you'll see a lot of cornerbacks and maybe fullbacks playing out in front, and playing high in you all the time. He he wasn't that type of player. He was marking his side by side, and even at times he was coming in playing behind you. So I I I, I would say he's a, he's an intelligent defender that he'd mark you in, in different angles depending on where the ball is on the field. Um. But he's just one of those guys that's just sticky, just always on your always on your shoulder, which is a great sign of the defender. Um, and yeah, as I said, look, it's an intriguing battle this weekend between the two. There's obviously a bit of a height difference there. I'm wondering is it something our man might target? I haven't seen Johnny too much exposed to that, so it's you know, it's not I'm not saying it's a weakness or anything, but I suppose you're looking at in the in the size wide between the two guys, there's a there's a bit of a difference. Yeah, when you look at the team that played G, I suppose there is a good few changes when you mentioned the absentees that weren't there. Maybe some of the younger players got their chance that day. Were you at the game then in Markovic when Goa played, Irma? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was, yeah. Yeah. Just with that, a lot of a lot of people, Goa people have been on the podcast since. For the first fifty five minutes, that was probably one of Goa's best performances of the year. They're in such mm. control. They were so efficient. They were, yeah, and I actually started watching the game back, that game back a little bit last night, just to kind of get a a, a feel for how it went, because I know I was there that day, and I was, left the game, like, extremely, 
frustrated with our man, how they had played and how they had set up. And I, I came away, you know, actually quite surprised at how much I thought Galway were ahead of our man. I know in the last 10 minutes that maybe it fell apart, there was different mistakes and whatnot. But, um, and, and actually, Armagh had missed their first three chances. I think they had three wides after eight minutes, and there was a strong breeze behind them. So, um, I, I suppose I watched it again last night. I was thinking, okay, maybe Armagh weren't as actually far away as we thought. Those three chances were actually relatively easy for, for their guys. But, yeah, I definitely came away from that that game that I think these goals are, are, are a long way ahead of Armagh. But in saying that, you have to credit our ma for coming back into the game, albeit maybe those two mistakes. I think for the goal the keeper to win in one one. Um, but even on watching it there again, I was very impressed with our ma squeezing on the kick out. Yeah, it's something I'm intrigued about again this week to see what, will that happen. Um, because I think that that's going to be a huge part of the game in terms of, of who comes out the top right here. Yeah, they are one of those sides to similar to when Mayo. When you think of that team, they're just kind of excellent at setting those traps for the kickouts. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I have a feeling that we might get a bit of a cagey affair just again, where you see teams dropping off. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about uh, goal is long kickout and things, but you know, I'm hopeful that you know, McGinney will see that as an opportunity to go and press the kickout and maybe try and force them on and see if they start to get some possessions around the middle of the field. Obviously, they got a goal off 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 one of Leeson's kick out. So will that be fresh in your mind as well again? And will they see that as a an attacking point to go after? So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. It'll be intriguing. I'm hoping they go after kick outs. I hope we don't go into this sort of stalemate affair, which I feel like it might do, where teams are just dropping off kick outs and we get that slow attack sort of style game. But I'm yeah, hoping the two boys have their soul out early. It's basically been a drought for both counties when you consider the last time they won Sam Maguire, Goy 01 or Mao 02. Do you think when you talk maybe about that caginess and maybe control is what we're seeing in these inter-county games, do you think that'll play on the minds that it's been such such a long time for, for both teams when they've last got over the line? In some sense it will. Um, in some sense it will. Like I suppose you're, you're probably... They're you know, looking at the experience of Galway having been there a couple of years ago. Will that play into their hand? And this was when I'm thinking of a winner, and I find myself going back to that. And Galway being there and the experience, but 100% both teams will see this as a huge, huge opportunity. And um, no one envisaged these teams being there at the start of the year. So, yeah, again, I, I think it will play probably subconsciously on the minds that this is such a massive opportunity as any old Ireland final is, but. The chances of one of them being back there again or winning again the next few years is maybe maybe slim. So that's why I feel like we might get this really really cagey affair of teams dropping off kickouts. We're just seeing these kind of slow pedantic attacks. Uh, well, I'm yeah fearful that that's that this weekend is going to be one of those games. But I said I'm hopeful that it won't be. With that, for the for the players this week, there's such a demand for tickets. People are going after them like mad. If you're a player, obviously, you, you don't want to be in any of that talk. You probably don't even want to be talking about the match. From your own experience around a big game, do you just simply go to ground this week? Yeah, you will. Like, look, obviously, I haven't experienced this uh, this big a game. I think the most tickets we ever got were five or six tickets, I think, for an all Ireland final. Players could be getting 20 or 25 or something. But I, I, I they should be just offloading that on a family member or a brother or a sister or something like that. That's, that's the recommendation I've given it. I mean, it's, it's hard to get away from the, the surface that's around it. I think they're as well embrace it. Um, I can only talk about it, it's just a game, etc. It's, it's not really like there is a, an added surface around it. But yeah, look, I think small things like that, you just you just try and pawn off on maybe a family member or a friend, brother or sister, as I said. So yeah, I don't, I don't unfortunately, have experience of, of this level of surface, but um, I'm sure like like McGeady and Joyce, they've been there and, and done it. So, you know, they're both experienced guys. I think you know, I think they'll be able to quell any any issues around that. Just on this then, so since you played Galway, they obviously won the Connacht final late against uh, Mayo with Gleason's uh, long range free. Then in the group stage, uh, Bet Derry, Bet Westmead narrowly, and then obviously a draw with that Armagh game. Um and then Monaghan 
it's obviously we get over the line there. Dublin, a really historic day, and then Donegal, and now in the final against Irma. Since you last played them, what do you think they developed most to now? Uh, getting those players back. It's, it's, it really is as simple as that. Like, as I said, like the likes of Comer, did Tierney, Maher didn't feature against us. Comer obviously come on, but having those those players back, like they're they're massive, massive players. And even Walsh today played us, I think it was his first day back. Uh, after a number of weeks out, obviously had a he had an interrupted league campaign as well. So if him sort of on a different level now to where he was at against us, and I think it's that simplicit that it's that simple that they have those top players. Like you're talking about Comer, McDear, Tierney, top top level players. Uh, and then when you've Walsh on his game as well, looking at different level as well. So um, I do think it's as simple as that. I think when you bring up the level of players that are on the pitch, everything else around you starts to fall into place. Um, it was like one worry, I suppose, when I was looking at over the last couple of games is they've only had one goal, I think, over the last four games. And that was Conroy's goal the last day from, from the middle yeah. of the pitch. Um, that's one area where they haven't been massive on, even against us. Um, the goal they obviously took came from, from a mistake uh, a mistake in the, in the 70th minute. So, look, it's definitely one area of the game where they haven't improved on, is what I'd say. Now, look, there was a couple of games early on that they, they got the goals and got maybe tried against London as well. But, but as I said, since that last four games, with one goal, and that was from a, from a shot from 40, 50 yards away. Contrast that it, with, with our man, I think we've had seven goals in the last couple of games. Uh, six or seven goals, and only three against Derry uh, a couple of weeks ago as well. So that's one part of the game. And, um, you know, if you can get a goal or two, if you can get two goals in the line of final, it can bring you a long way home. Is it a good thing maybe, I don't want to say final, Comer and Walsh have only gradually been getting back to themselves and it's obviously injury problems there. Like Shane was very good against Dublin, but then obviously got injured later on and had to come off. Um, He was held the last day. Brendan McCall held Comer quite well. Is it a good thing in one sense that they're kind of more your experienced players coming into this game? Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And if you go back to the final two years ago, I think against Kerry Comer had a relatively quiet game as well. So there's a small sense that he could explode at the weekend. Um, now, again, I find it difficult for inside forwards to explode in this game because I think it's going to be those slow but antic attacks. Um, but yeah, look, I, think it, I think it leads uh, to something good for, for Galway. It's very rare you'll have Comer and Walsh even Tierney quiet in back to back days. Like I think between the three of them did Walsh got one point from from playing the game. And I know it was kind of it was an off sort of a high ball into the square. It was sort of a scruffy point. Um so yeah like as I said like those three boys were quiet in the semi final. I can't see the three of them being that quiet again uh, in a final. So that definitely lends itself uh lends itself good to go on with. Um, and I think that you could probably say the same but I'm mad if a couple of lads quiet in the in their semi final as well, like Merlin Connolly didn't score, Grugan, I think, got a point from a three as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of lads, the main lads, quiet in the semi final. I can't see them that way for the final. I can't see it that way. I did ask Ray Connell in the question yesterday in part one of the show. Um, for a lot of us Goy fans this week, we're nearly watching here to Sunday every day to maybe just try yeah. and calm ourselves and look back at those memories. Have you watched it? It was a long, long time ago I watched it. Um, and I've heard about it a lot over the last week or two. I must rewatch it. Um, Kevin Walsh obviously managed us with Sligo. So I'd say it was back then when I watched it last. Um, so that's 10, 12 years ago. Um, but yeah, I must I must dig it out again. It was a great show from, from memory. Yeah, for sure. Um, just with that, the Go Air Man, like, there is a sense that this, there might be a bit of caginess and this, and then we might get a bit of chaos last mm. 20. I suppose we're probably not... Well, I suppose we, we don't really care and go how how's how's it played as long as we get over the line. But for even the supporters, you, you want to see just both teams go at it. A hundred percent. And I was having this conversation with, with someone earlier, it nearly needs a goal early on or needs someone to go three or four points up early on for the other team to come out and play. I feel like that's how it will go. Um as I said, the the kick out thing is is huge for me. I think I'm, I said, I'm very intrigued with how that would go, how our ma would set up specifically about it. Because I think, like, yeah, our ma got one, one ten out or one twelve in Sligo. Um, offshore kick outs. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. So, look, Armagh are definitely very good at going short. I think, I don't think it's, go, when Galway press, um, I know you have Walsh, Homer, Infinity, I don't think defending is probably the biggest part of their game. And I think, you know, if Armagh want to go short, I think they can go short. Uh, on the flip side, I think Armagh could force Galway long. There's a lot of talk about Galway's long kickouts, and, and it's, they're brilliant and getting a lot of joy off. And I actually think it's, sometimes it's an inability to go short. Um and you know and look at their short kickouts the time you can across sometimes is basic so I think if their ma really want it and I feel like if if I was in their shoes I would try and force them long and I would try and push up I know there's a lot of big lads out around the middle but their ma do do with the likes of Freely and Grimley and these fellas so for me that's an intriguing part if I if we see if I see their ma stepping up and pressing kickouts I give them a huge huge chance that's yeah, going to be that that side of the game is going to be fascinating. Do you think we will get a game where both teams call it? I don't. I don't. I'm worried we won't. As I said, I'm very, very worried we won't. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Like in in fairness, in that game in in Markwich Park that day, uh, Armagh went after the kick out in the first half. Now Armagh had a strong breeze, but they went in three points down as well at half time. So they had to come out in the second half, and it was after the kick out again, and, and they got their one one. I think off off short kick outs and mistakes. So. Galway did drop off to kick out uh, in that game in the in the first half as well a lot. As I said, Armagh had a breeze, so um, I think a lot of it's going to come down to that whether teams really want to press high. Uh, and as I said, if we if we could see a goal or three, someone going up three or four points earlier on, we'd get a game. If it's K, if it's if we're going one one two one two all three all, I, I think we could be in for a long day. To be honest, I think we could be in for a long day. How do you see it going, and do you think the twenty-two experience could actually stand to go away? It can. I was, I was looking at that game as well. So, uh, from my reckoning, that the draw game is it the one that went to penalties? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was looking at there, and um, Galway had eleven starters at the that I mean, expect to play in the final, and our man only had five. Uh, so it's a massive, it's a huge turnaround. Um, but it could have been five or six. There's a, they have a lot of change over from them, so I don't think either team will read a lot into it. Uh, to, be, to be totally honest, again, it was a draw 2024 championship with draw, so there's nothing separate besides. I know goal, I think, nicked uh, did they nick a league win in there last year? They might have made a couple of points, yeah. And our man nicked the win down in Carrick last year, too, to get that right. top spot, yeah. That's right, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's been nothing between the teams, and um, I don't think they'll read too much in 2022. Um, does it does it count though that Galway have won like trophies under Joyce and Arma? Like it's it's just it's just it's not a dig around them, but it's just stating that like that they haven't got a trophy under McGinney. Yeah, it it will do because I know that narrative is in the media out there and it's been thrown at McGinney a lot. And um, so yeah, a hundred percent that will play into the players' minds a little bit, subconsciously more than anything else. Um, but again, neither have done it on this big stage anyway. Neither have yeah. won the All Ireland and the and the Dorify title. So, because when you're looking at that, you're going, "Galway have been there two years ago. Is that going to stand to them?" I think it will. Um, but at the same time, I know like our map play big, big games. You know, they've, they've brought teams down to Melton Park. They've lost how many penalties? Um, you know, penalty shootout. So, oh, yeah, there is. You can say Galway have won a couple of the titles. One more to beat us last year, obviously as well. Um, so yeah, look, it, it it'll be a sticking point if they don't get over the line. This again, it's definitely a, a narrative that's going to be punched out on uh, McGee again. Who's going to do it? I was hoping you'd ask that question. Um, I've been, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how to tell you the truth. I'm, I, I fancy a draw, but I'm over and back in my head, and I'm switching every five and ten minutes. Um, I can't envisage uh, uh, the whistle going and Galway on a losing side for some reason, um, but uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go with our man. Um, Jeez, that's like brave it. on a Galway podcast. It is, it is, it is. But I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. And it's down to the the subs bench, right? Um, I think even the last day, I'll, I'll be the one text time with our man. It, you know, the Campbell coming on, the Jerry Oak coming on, the McQuillan coming on, getting scores. Galway had nothing off, off their side of the bench. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll stick my head out there and uh, go for a point win with our map, but very, very, very reluctantly. 
very very well I, th- I think we all we're all hoping now you're wrong um, I know. this weekend but j- oh. just fi- just finally um, I was mentioning to Aaron Kernan earlier in the week about the football of the year conversation and it's natural because it's the final and people talk about it but for me it feels like at the minute it's between Connor Turbers and Dylan McHugh and it's crazy in one sense if you're to consider those two because there was so much talk I suppose after the league about other footballers these two probably weren't even in the conversation yeah, I agree. It, it probably is between those two. Um, Ryan O'Neill's probably in the conversation a little bit. Like if he goes and shoots lights out the weekend, then you know he probably jumps ahead of the two lads as well. But like, yeah, they wouldn't have been you know, on anyone's lips uh, at all. I think I the, like you know, three or four years ago was was Dylan McHugh on the bench for Horrifin even. Yeah. Um. So he he's kind of long something shock, and then probably no one really knew much about him last year. Let's say. Or even, or even this year. So yeah, it probably is. Like if, if Turbot can kick three or four points from play, I think he has. I think he could have it in the bag. And um, but again, it's going to probably depend on, on who comes out on top. And if, if Golder comes on top, then McHugh is a good game. I think he's at someone up, and, and vice versa for for Turbot with our math. But um, yeah, it's 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 an intriguing one. Um, Conroy, I know Conroy seems to be way out in the odds, but he's been clipping away nicely all year and. I, he probably won't get it, but if he was to kick three or four points or something to play at the weekend, he might push himself into that conversation, but he's probably a little bit too far out uh, for the game. Would you know Paul? I would I would know Paul briefly, yeah. I would, yeah. I would I would know him a couple of times, yeah. Even for Colin football, it would be tremendous to see him get it because he's he's went through so much like like a lot of these footballers didn't go through the dark days that he went like even a, a prime example is he was playing in twenty twelve when Goy lost Mayo for eighteen to twelve points. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm 20, I think I'm right in sense Sligo beat Galway as well in in twenty twelve. Paul after the replay, playing. wasn't it? Yeah, up in Pier Stadium. Um, that was twenty ten, I think. Oh, okay. Twenty twelve was in Pier Stadium in Salt Hill. Uh, Paul Connor was playing full forward from memory. I think I got that right. Um, but yeah, I know. Look, he's look, he's he's a top player. Um. But probably would have started off clear and full forward. He could still be there. He could yeah, he could end up, you know, he's still under a couple of years in him where you could see him back into that full forward role. But now nah, he's 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 top quality there. He's a, definitely a player as an inside forward you'd love to have out around the middle. His kick passing is, is always great. He's out of that orthodox, he loves that pump pump pass ball, but um no a great player. I think uh, yeah, I you know I'd love to see him get an there. Yeah, he probably need probably need a good game at the weekend to get an all-star. And I think if he's a massive game, he could put himself into the earlier conversation. As I said, he's probably just a little bit outside that. Great stuff. Uh, that's all we do of uh, time for on today's show. Thanks a million to Niall for coming on.